during these 40 years of wandering, all the leaders of Israel died. And a new generation that was born in freedom, they did not follow the footsteps of Pharaoh. They were not affected by those who disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A new generation, pure, courageous, free, led the children of Israel. During this wandering, during these 40 years, the great messengers of Allah, Musa and Harun, Moses and Aaron, both died in the desert in Palestine. No prophet would die, as the Prophet Sallallahu tells us, in a normal way. See, we, when we die, the angel of death comes and takes our soul away. But for the prophets, it's different. The prophets are given a choice. The angel of death would come clearly to them, say, I'm the angel of death, would you permit me to take your soul? If you don't permit me, I would go back to Allah and ask him, what should I do? So the angel of death came to Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam, as we see, is a very strong man, very strong prophet. And he had his harsh ways of dealing with, with corruption and so on. So the angel of death, being an obedient angel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, came to Musa alayhi salam. And he said, do you give me permission to take your soul and make you die? Musa said, what? And he hit him. He hit the angel of the death. That's how Musa salam dealt with things. The angel of death returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is all in the hadith. He said, oh Allah, you have sent me to a servant who does not want to die. He did not even ask me. He hit me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the angel of the death to go back to Musa alayhi salam. And he did. He said, Musa, I'm only ordered to ask your permission to take your soul and make you die. And if you want to live, then Allah will give you this. He said, what? He said, put your hand on an ox and as many hair of the ox that you cover, the number of hair that you cover, that how many years you shall live. He said, and then what? He said, and then after that you shall die. Everyone must die. Musa said, then let it be now, if I should die. That is how he gave permission for his death. But he said, oh Allah, I would ask for one thing. I would like to die in the Holy Land, in Jerusalem, or close to it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you cannot go to Jerusalem because your people are still in the 40 years of wandering, but you may die close to Jerusalem. So while the people of Israel were traveling, not knowing that only a small hill was between them and Jerusalem, they did not know. They passed by that hill and continued to move into the wandering. At that hill, Musa salam died. That hill is so close to Jerusalem that the Prophet Sallallahu described it. This is also in the great hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, if I was there near Jerusalem, I would show you the grave of Moses. It is by the road, the main road leading from the south to Jerusalem. At a stone's throw distance from Jerusalem, I mean, if you stand on the hill, you could throw a stone and you are, the stone would be in, within the borders of Jerusalem. That's how close it was. The Prophet ﷺ gives us even another description by saying it is, the grave is by the red dune. A red dune, it's a small hill. A dune is a small sand hill. And the sand is red in color. So the Prophet ﷺ gives us the exact location. Now, of course, Jerusalem has grow, grew so big that this location is within Jerusalem, close to the mosque the great mosque of Jerusalem. So that is where he, he died. May Allah be pleased with him, peace be upon him, the great messenger of Allah, Musa alayhi salam. After his death, in two years, Harun alayhi salam died. He led the children of Israel two years after the death of Musa alayhi salam, and then he also died in the wandering, in the desert.
after that, the young boy who was 15 with Musa السلام, when he went to meet Al-Khidr, he led the children of Israel. Yosha, Joshua, the son of Nun, is the great prophet that followed Musa and Harun السلام. Now he is old, he is a messenger of Allah, and he led the children of Israel. Now we come into a period where they, the, the Israelis call it, call it the period of the prophets. See, the, there's a period of Musa and Harun, and then there is the period of the prophets, and then there is a period they call the period of the kings. Three major periods. The period of the great messengers, and then the period of the prophets. prophets. This started with Joshua. And then came the period of the kings. During the period of the prophets, the children of Israel, the tribes of Israel, were governed by prophets. They were led by prophets. During the period of the kings, they were led by kings, while there were also prophets at the same time. Separation between prophethood and leadership. But the first one after Musa السلام, and Harun to lead the children of Israel was Joshua. Great man great messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He learned the Torah, the book of Allah, from Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam trained him well on both knowledge and practice of religion. He was guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was a very ethical, great leader. And he, they, the scholars tell us that he was born during the years in exile. So if say he was born, say, year one of the exile, so uh, he would have been 40 years old when Musa السلام, died. He did not live in Egypt. He did not live at the period of slavery. He was not affected by the gods of the Egyptians. Pure in faith and pure in freedom. So when the 40 years finally ended, he marched with the children of Israel from the wandering. They found their way out and they marched to some say Jerusalem, some say Haifa, Cherokee. Anyway, it was destined that they will conquer it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have promised them that and they now are ready. They were trained during the wandering. Now they are longing to be victorious. They, they knew that they were punished for 40 years because they refused to fight and make jihad. So a new generation now emerged. We need that as Muslims. We need a new generation, free, believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, strong, not a generation like the ones that are leading us, weak. They look up to their masters in the West. We need somebody who is truly free to lead us again. Anyway, Joshua, may Allah, peace of Allah be upon him, marched with his people, say, let's go back to the story, and he marched with his people towards, many scholars believe, Jerusalem now. He besieged Jerusalem, surrounded it for six months. Six months, this city had physically very strong people who were harsh, they were tyrants, they were disbelieving in Allah, and now the believers with Joshua would besiege them. And they started to pressure them. You know, so when you besiege a city, it, took, it takes time. Now it was breaking down. So they, the people inside the city decided they cannot wait any longer. So they marched outside. And the battle now is not for people who are in, inside the city and outside. It, the, whole, the, the whole battle is outside the city now. The battle happened on Friday. Now it's the order of Allah to the children of Israel that they should not fight on Saturday. Now, what, when does Saturday start? It's not like how we calculate things now. In Islam and in, in uh, Judaism and in the old days, a day starts at sunset. Now they change it into midnight. But truly, a new day starts at sunset. So sunset Friday is the beginning of Saturday. And the people of Israel are not allowed to fight. They are not allowed to work 
on Saturday. This is their laws. So the fighting continued, and people of Israel were winning, but they still needed more time. The final conquest was almost there, but the sunset was almost there too. The sun was almost setting, and Joshua was leading the battle, and his eyes was always on the sun. If, it, if the sun sets, he must stop the war. And if he stops the war for a whole day, 24 hours, then these, his enemies would reorganize themselves and he has to go through a whole battle again. He was almost winning. And then the sun was a few seconds away from setting. So he knew he cannot win in a few seconds and he might lose in 24 hours. This is his chance after 40 years. So he started to pray. Oh, son, he was talking to the son. Oh, son, I and you are creatures of Allah. We are both created by Allah. Oh, my Lord, oh Allah, please stop the sun. Do not let it set, otherwise our victory will be lost. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, the sun has never stopped in track at the command of a human being, except for Joshua when he marched to Jerusalem. It was a great miracle from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to show the people of Palestine, the people of Israel, that this is a messenger of Allah, this is a great prophet of Allah. So the earth stopped spinning, and thus the sun remained in its position until the children of Israel, led by Joshua, were victorious and conquered their enemy. This hadith is narrated by Al-Bukhari. So there is no question on its authenticity. Now he conquered the city, he conquered the army, he's ready to enter the city. Now he must show his people how to deal with Allah's praise and Allah's gifts. Allah gave them this gift by a miracle. He gave them the gift of being victorious. So now they are ready to march into the city. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Joshua to teach his people, when you enter the city, do a few things. First thing, enter humbly. When you are inside the city, prostrate and put your head on the ground, thanking Allah. And ask Allah by saying Hitta. Hitta means forgive our sins. Hitta means throw away. So throw away our sins. So the army obeyed, they entered. But some of those transgressors, they mocked the orders of Allah and the Prophet. They did not enter humbly, they answered laughing. When they came in, they entered the gate, not prostrating, but by turning around and starting going in with their behinds first. And instead of saying hitta, they said hinta, which means wheat, wheat. <laughs> Very close. But they, they thought that the Prophet did not hear them. Still they played with the words of Allah. That is how the children of Israel. These are some of those who were affected by the older generations that did not take religion seriously and they did not ask, take Allah and his messenger seriously. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set a punishment on these people by turning them into monkeys and pigs. That is why we say they are the brothers and the sisters of the monkeys and the pigs. Of course, these monkeys and pigs did not have any descendants. Whatever we see today has nothing to do with these people because it stopped at that. But it was a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa 